Praise the Lord. Certainly hear a lot of sickness going around, a lot of different things like that happening, but we know that God is able. You know, he is the one that heals us. He is the one that is able to uh, deliver us. So my confidence is always in God. Tonight I want to talk about uh, waiting on the Lord. Um, so if you could turn to Psalms, the 27th Psalm, the 14th verse, because it, it's, it's the will of God that the child of God wait on him. The 27th Psalm, the 14th verse, I'll give a little extra time uh, because I know we don't have it on the TV. If we can get an amen. 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 It says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Um, wait in this context doesn't mean to be patient, uh, though the Bible tells us to be patient people. It says in, in your patience, possess your souls. Right. I heard Elder Wallace teach a Bible class not too long ago about Andrew. Uh, we have to make sure that we're not being pure writers, that we are inviting people in church, that we are uh, ministering. Right. You might not be called to the ministry, but you got obligations to witness. You got obligations to minister. Though you might not be directly called to preach or teach over the pulpit, we got to make sure that we are fulfilling our obligations, right? Uh, a lot of times it's really easy to become complacent, right? But the Bible says, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. It's really easy to just come to church. It's really easy to say, well, I got it. I've made it. But what about everybody else? Right. We have to be that light unto a darkened world. We have to be that hand that extends to the world. Right. Because without us, they can't they can't see God. Um, so in this context, the scripture uh, isn't talking about being patient. It's talking about uh, waiting with expectation. And I can give you another scripture to help out with that. Uh, in Psalm 62, verse five, to serve with expectation. The psalmist says, my soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. So as we serve God, we should be expecting something from him. Right. I don't just, you know, stand up here on Wednesday night to, to look good for y'all. No, right? I don't come to church and just go through the fiery trials just because. I don't just live a holy lifestyle. And, and, and the Bible says sin is fun for a season. I'm not just missing out on, on some, some, a sinful, fun lifestyle just because. No, it's because I'm expecting something from God, right? God said in the book of Revelations, he said, uh, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my Father in heaven. See, I'm looking to, for, for God. I don't just uh, serve him for no reason, right? I want to get something from him. I want everlasting life. And that's what God will give me, right? I'm not, I'm not satisfied with just serving Christ in this life. Because if I'm satisfied with just coming to church in this life, then I'm involved in most miserable is what the Bible says. Right. So I'm expecting something from God. Um, if I can give you an example, I'm a minister. Right. And Paul told the ministers that we should wait on our ministry. Right. I'm serving. I'm preaching. I'm teaching Bible classes. I'm trying to do whatever God uh, asked me to do, but I'm not doing it for no reason. I want heaven to be my home. If I can give you another illustration, we went to Cracker Barrel. Y'all know I love Cracker Barrel. If who don't know, I do love Cracker Barrel. But we went to Cracker Barrel. Right. And you have a person waiting on you. Right. You think they waiting on you just because they're not waiting on you for fun. They're expecting something. Somebody said a fat tip well, where, where they are. They don't they don't just get fill up your drinks. They don't just, you know, be kind and be polite. They might be having a bad day, but they can't show it. But they serve you for a reason. They serve you expecting a tip from you. And that's the same way we are with God. We ought to serve God expecting something from God because God has made some promises to us. You j just think about that. Just think about a tithes and offering. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't receive. Right. He said, uh, 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 ask in the book of Isaiah, he said, ask of me concerning the things of my sons, the, the works of my hands. He said, command ye me. There are things that you can command God to do things that now don't get out of body, saints, but you can command God to do things that he said he would do in his word. Right. I can give you an example. God said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraid if not. If you are having a problem with wisdom, if you're having a problem getting understanding of God's word, ask God. He'll give it to you. He has to because his word said he will do it. Right. So there's things that we can ask God. There's things that we can expect God to do because God has got an obligation just like we got obligations. So Peter in, in Luke chapter 18, verse 28, this is what Peter says to Jesus. And this is after uh, Jesus has talked to uh, the, the rich ruler and the rich ruler came to him and he asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
right? And Jesus told him, take everything you got, sell it and give it to the poor and, and take up thy cross and follow me. But we know he walked away sorrowful. Well, Peter's like, this is what Peter says in Luke 18, 28. It says, then Peter said, Lord, we have left all and followed thee. You know, what should we get? Like, this is, this is a legit question that Peter's asking. Peter was a fisherman. This was his livelihood. He wasn't just fishing because he liked, you know, they throw him back. No, this is what he did for a living. Peter had a wife. He had a family. Uh, this is a, a, a honest question. He had, God, what am I going to get? What are we going to get? We have left everything. You got to think they had family. They had, they had obligations. This is how they, they fed, they fed, like when I came to the Lord, I sold, I sold drugs, right? So I had to give up something. People, a lot of times we tell people salvation is free. You ain't got to give up nothing to be saved. That's not true. That was my livelihood. That's how I ate. I, that's how I made my means. That's how I made my living was selling drugs. So when I came to God, I had to have confidence. I had to expect that God would give me something in return. I had to expect that, you know what, I'm, I'm laying there all this down. I'm giving all this up, but you know what, God's going to give me something greater in return. I had to have that kind of faith and that kind of confidence in him. A lot of us do different things like that. A lot of us, you know, sever relationships, right? You might have severed a relationship with, with a family member, with a mother, you know, with, with a daughter, with your parents. You might have given that up, and it, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, right? Jesus said, I, I came not to bring peace. But a sword. I came to bring variants. He said, I, I came. He said, a foe might be of that of your own household, right? These are things that you might have to give up. You might have to turn your back on your parents. You might have to turn your back on, on your brother, your, your favorite. Some Everybody got a favorite cousin. You might have to turn your back on your favorite cousin, right? Y'all might do d different things, and that's something that you might have to give up. So, so that's what Peter's asking. Peter's asking a legit question. You got to think. Jesus told him earlier, he said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man have no relay his head. Yeah, you, you ask me to take up my cross and follow thee, and you ain't even got nowhere to sleep. So what, what am I going to get? Right? What am I going to get for, 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 for laying all this down, for doing all this? And Jesus goes on, he, he explains a little bit here. In the next verse, he says, um, in, in verse 29, he says, uh, Verily I say unto thee, there is no man that have left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children for the kingdom of, of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world come everlasting. Now he says, for the kingdom of God's sake. Now there are some people that have left family. There are some people that have left mother, have left children, but they can't expect to get life everlasting. They can't expect to get more in this present time if they didn't leave for the kingdom of God's sake, if they didn't leave for the church, if they didn't leave to be saved. You can't expect to get something from God and you ain't, you ain't did what, that's not what he said. He said, for the kingdom of God's sake, right? So, who shall receive more in this present time? Uh, the, the Bible says, in the Psalms it says, uh, blessed is the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, right? Give us this day our daily bread. See, we have things now, in this life right now, more. Right. The fact that you came to church. Right. The fact that if you do have the Holy Ghost, you have the opportunity to receive God's word. You have the opportunity to understand it. Th these are things that everybody can't get right in the book. He feeds it says, blessed be God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. There are spiritual blessings that we have right now in the church. Being part of God's church, that we have been chosen in him, that we have redemption, you know, through his name. These are different things that, that we have right now that a lot of people don't have, right? This is an advantage. We now have the oracles of God. They used to have them, but now we got them. The world doesn't have that. So there are some that have left home. There are some that have left, you know, mother. Like I said, there are some that have left father to be saved. They have left brothers to be saved, right? But they have more now in this present time than they ever will have then. If they wouldn't have gave those things up, they wouldn't be able to have eternal life in them. They wouldn't be able to, to make heaven their home. Right. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, for whosoever will do the will of my father, the same as my brother, the same as my sister, the same as, as my mother. So you might have lost out on a natural mother, but you got a spiritual one. Right. You might have lost out on a natural brother, but you got a spiritual brother. You know, you might not you might lost out on a spiritual, a natural sister, but you got a spiritual sister. We all know God is our father. Right. So that 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 has been that has been a replaced, so to speak. You know, a lot of times it's, it's hard for us to to get past different things that we got to give up, different things that we got to overcome. But God is able. Amen. Then he says in the world to come uh, everlasting. Now, I, I know that the, the rapture is going to be a good thing, but we, we can expect a lot more after the rapture. 
This is what Paul said in Ephesians. He said that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through, through Christ Jesus. So that means that even after the rapture, it'll take ages to come that God's going to still show us his kindness and his goodness through Christ Jesus. The, it, it, the, the rapture is just the beginning, saints. It, it, it doesn't end with the rapture, but because we don't have a lot, the Bible doesn't talk a lot about afterwards, we think that's it. No, we're going to be doing a lot in eternity. We got a lot. We serving God for a reason now. It's not for, I ain't serving God for no reason. Now. I'm, I'm looking to make heaven my home, right? I'm looking to, to get some of those, those, those riches in his goodness. Amen. And, uh, verse 28, it says, this is what Jesus says. Now, this is actually, it, it's, it's, it's Matthew's account of what Luke said. So it's it's the same thing, but it's a little bit different because it's Matthew's account of what Luke said in verse 28 of Matthew 19, 20. I'll give you a second while I drink some of this water here. But this is just Matthew's account of what what uh, Pete, uh, Jesus is answering, what Peter asked him. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get there. Amen. In Matthew 19, uh, verse uh, chapter 19, verse 28, it says, and Jesus said unto them. Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now he says, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Well, minister, what is that? The regeneration is, now I've been regenerated. I've been born again. So what Jesus is saying is, ye that have followed me in this saved life, in this life that we now live being saved. Right. He that has followed me in the regeneration shall get these things. Right. He said he that continue in my word. He is my disciple indeed. Right. It's not enough just being saved. It's not enough just sitting in God's church. It's not enough just just, just soaking up salvation for yourself. You got to follow Jesus in the regeneration. You have to continue in his word. Amen. Amen. So God is looking for something. He's, look, he's looking for somebody said fruit. Right. He, he's looking for fruit from his saints. If you're a child of God, he's looking for some fruit. Amen. Amen. So go to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 13 and verse 6. Somebody said, I'm a fruit inspector. No, God is a fruit inspector. I heard that saying. I always thought that was funny. <laughs> You're a fruit inspector. But God is certainly looking for some fruit from his people. So in Luke chapter 13, verse 6, it's a parable that he's speaking here. It says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Right now, that certain man is, is, is God, is Jesus Christ. And that vineyard is the church. It's actually, it can be broken down to the individual saints in God's church, right? The Bible says, uh, Paul says, for we are uh, laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We are God's farm. We are his cultivated field. Right. We are. God's not getting fruit from nowhere else. He's not looking for the world to get no fruit from. He's looking to get fruit from his church. So he came looking for fruit, but he found none there on. I, I, I like to imagine a, a farmer, right? A farmer purchases a field. Right. And he uh, sets the sage. He, he plants the seeds. He's he's got those. those what are those big water things? I don't even know what those things is called. The things that irrigations. Right. There it is. But it's, it spits out water, right? He, he, he sets the stage. He's got different types of pesticides. He's got different types of things that nourish the ground. And he goes into a far country and say he comes back and there ain't no fruit growing. How would, how would he feel if he set the stage? He planted the seed, right? Good seed. Not bad seed, none of that. He, good seed, right? He's planted all these things. He, he had the right amount of water. The temperature's perfect, right? It, it, it's sunny, sunny all day. And he come back and there's no fruit, right? There is no weed. He said, ain't no corn, ain't no corn, right? He, I, I think I, he might feel some type of way. So, so this is, what, this is, this is what, what, what God is, so to speak. This is what God is feeling. And he came and sought fruit there, and he found none, right? In verse 7, it says, then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumber it, uh, the, it the ground, right? It says, then he said unto the dresser of the vineyard. Now, this is the New Testament pastor. The pastor is the, the, the under shepherd. He is the one that takes care of God's vineyard. He is the one that takes uh, care of, of God's people, right? Now, notice this is the conversation that God is having with his, the keeper of his vineyard. He's not having the conversation with just the fig tree, right? Just like in the Old Testament, the, the, the pastor of the church in the wilderness was Moses. When God came to talk about the children of Israel, who did he talk to? 
He talked to Moses. He never went down to talk to straight to the people. He always talked to Moses, right? So th this is what this is. This is uh, God talking to his pastor. And this is what he said to him. He said, behold, uh, these three years, I come seeking fruit on the fig tree and find none. Now, notice he gives a time frame here. When God saves us, he's not expecting you to be all you need to be the day you get saved, right? He ain't asking you to quote 30 scriptures <laughs> as soon as you get, you know, baptized Jesus name filled with the Holy Ghost. He's not asking you to bring 20 souls in the first week you get saved. It says right here, it says three years. So God does things in the process of time. A lot of times it takes time to do things, right? I don't know anybody who's ever planted a seed and then the next day it was a, it was a full gone tree. No, it takes time. Right. But there is a certain time that when God comes and he's looking for fruit, that you should have some. You should have some fruit when God's coming. He knows how much fruit you should have. See, the minister might not know. You might be able to fool the pastor. Right. You might be able to fool anybody, you know, your spouse, but you're not going to fool God. God knows how much fruit you need to have. And that's the conversation that obviously God's going to have with you. God, does. you know, if you're not doing like he's supposed to do, you know, we can we can play. You know, tiddly winks if we want to, but you know what God is requiring from you. You know, if you haven't read like you should read, you know, if you haven't studied like you should study, you know, God, God deals with us this way. That's why we have the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he said, uh, so God expects, God expects us to have some fruit. And if I could give you a scripture uh, about the slowful servant, what happened to the slowful servant that had one talent? He took that talent and what did he do? He buried it. But God, this is, this is what, this is what, this is what the, uh, basically God told him. He said, you know that I reap where I've sown not, and I gather where I have not straw. Right? In other words, I've given you the Holy Ghost. God has given us the Holy Ghost. He expects some fruit from it. He didn't save you just, just so you could not do nothing with it. He didn't save me just so I could not study my Bible. He didn't call me to the ministry just so I could say I'm a minister. You know, I'll hold the title of a minister. No, I better be digging in my Bible and giving his people something. Right. I got obligations that I have to do. I have responsibilities. And so, so God is looking for something. Right. He gave you the Holy Ghost, hence the nine fruits of the spirit. Right. If, if I'm doing uh, what I'm supposed to be doing, people should see the righteousness of God in me. People should see holiness. Right. People should see a difference, whether it's on my job or whether whatever it is. People should see that there's something about me. Let you be around somebody for one year, two years. Ain't no reason why they shouldn't know you go to church. Right. They shouldn't have to question, man, can I invite him to the bar? See, people that know me for more, you know me for two months, a month, you know, you ain't invite me to no bar. Right. But th these are things that people should know about us. They should know that we not. I can't ask him that. I already know not to ask him that. Right. Uh, so we, we got to make sure that we're producing that type of fruit. Right. Um, he says, cut it down. Why cumber it the ground? Well, let me re read that so it makes sense to you. So he said, but behold, uh, these three years I come seeking fruit uh, of this fig tree and find none. He said, cut it down, why cumber it the ground? Well, what does that mean? That means it's making the ground useless for the purpose it's intended for, right? Uh, imagine a farmer buying the best field he could possibly buy, the best field in the entire world, right? It's got the best uh, soil. It's got the best, the rain falls at the perfect time. The temperature's always right. And then he buys that field and he doesn't farm it. What would be the purpose of that? Why would he buy the best field he could buy, but then he don't he don't he don't plant no no crops on it? It wouldn't make sense. So God says, cut it down. But this is what the pastor says in verse eight. It says, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. See, this is what the pastor does. The pastor, whether you know it or not, he, he, God talks to the pastor about you. The pastor must give an account to God on your behalf. That's why you ought to do what he tell you to do. Not saying nobody not. I don't know nobody's business, but I ought, I better be doing what the pastor's telling me to do. Right? Because the pastor has a, he has a relationship with God and God is talking to him. The pastor is telling God about you. About e each one of us as an individual. He's going down. He's praying for you. God, give them some more time. Th this is what the pastor says. He answered, said, answer said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Give me some more time to work with them. Give me some more time to work with that, that child of God. Give me some more time to, to treat him, to, to, to prep him, to get him where he needs to be, right? It says, let it alone this year also. Why is he saying that? He says, till I dig about it and dung it. Well, everybody know what dung is. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what dung is. Dung, it acts as fertilizer, right? And this is what farmers use. They put dung down so that their crops can be good crops, so they can produce good fruit. Well, the pastor uses the word of God as dung. You got to let the pastor put some dung on you. I let him put some dung on you. Allow him to put that word on you. Accept the word that he's given you. Right? That's his job. It's his job to give you that word. It might be tough sometimes. 
I mean, Pastor told me some stuff. It was tough. Right. But I, I allowed him to give me that word. I received it because I wanted to be saved because I wanted to bear fruit. Right. That's his job. That's that's what he does. Um, in verse nine, it says, and if it bear fruit, well, amen. If 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 it bears, bears fruit after I give it word, amen. If not, he says, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. And one place he said, the axe is laid at the root of the tree and every every tree that beareth not fruit is hen down and cast in the fire. Well, if you're not producing fruit, you, you, you know, I, I got to say it. I guess I got to say it. You're going to be, you're going to go to the lake. You're going to go to the lake. So it's, we have an obligation to bear fruit. Everybody has an obligation to, to play their part, so to speak. Now, the Old Testament saints were a perfect example of waiting on the Lord, of serving the Lord with expectation. So go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. I'm almost finished. They served the Lord with expectation. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, it says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrim on earth. Right. It says not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded them. So even though they hadn't had the promises, even though they hadn't received what they what they thought they should receive or what they seen, they seen it afar off. Right. They, they had faith in, in Calvary. Though they, Calvary hadn't came, it's just like us, right? We, we've never seen what God did on Calvary. But our faith touches back to what he did on Calvary. Their faith touched to Calvary. Ours goes backwards, right? This is the faith that we have. This is the way they serve God. They serve God as if they had it, right? It says the, the prophets uh, knew that the salvation wasn't for them. I think it's in, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, maybe ch verse 10. It talks about how God revealed it unto the prophets that it, this wasn't for them. They knew that the, the Holy Ghost wasn't for them. They knew that what we have was not for them, but yet they still serve God, right? And one prophet laid on his side for like 300 days. I forgot who it was. Was it Jeremiah or Ezekiel? He laid on his side for like 300 days, yet knowing that he couldn't get the Holy Ghost, knowing that the salvation that we are blessed with, he didn't have, yet he still served God as if he had it. To me, that's so beautiful because like a lot of times we, we, we don't appreciate what the Holy Ghost does for us. The fact that the Holy Ghost can lead me and God, I don't have to lead myself. I've been leading myself long enough. But now I have something that can tell me, listen, don't do that. You better not do it. Now that you did it, get yourself together. You ain't got too much time. See, that's how the Holy Ghost will talk to you. Nobody's got an excuse why they out doing dirt because the Holy Ghost going to tell you, right? After so long, it won't deal with you no more, right? So we got to make sure that we're serving God. We're waiting on him. And waiting on him is serving him with expectation. Serve God. Be, be excited that, 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 that you can make heaven your home. Be, be excited that, that, that there's blessings that you have that nobody else has. Right? This is, this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a glorious thing that we have. That we can uh, uh, even serve God. Right? Because you got a lot of people that go years thinking they're serving God. Right. You go you go 50, 60 years putting all this work in thinking you serving God to only find out that you ain't you ain't really been serving him. Right. So we got to make sure we serving God. Amen. Amen. If we can all stand out dismissing Jesus name.